Namaskaram. Let us see what updates the WHO has given this year regards hearing screening in newborns. The WHO has given a mnemonic hearing to describe the set of interventions required for hearing. These include hearing screening throughout the life, that is, newborns, children, adulthood, and older age group, E for ear disease prevention and management, then access to technologies, rehabilitation services, improved communication noise reduction and greater community engagement. But in this video I shall restrict myself to talking about hearing screening in newborns only. So the guiding principle for screening in newborns is the 136 rule which means screen by 1 month of age, diagnose by 3 months of age and intervene maximum by 6 months of age and preferably as early as possible after diagnosis. Also, irrespective of the outcome of hearing screening, all infants and children should be routinely monitored with respect to hearing, cognitive development, communication, attainment of educational milestones, general health and well-being. The target population should include all newborns, that is, a universal screening needs to be done, or only the high-risk newborns, that is, an ICU graduates, in case there is resource limitation. But remember, at the same time, if we do high-risk screening, there is a chance of missing 50% of those having no apparent cause of congenital hearing loss. So the screening protocol involves screening in two stages. In the first stage, we assess the newborn soon after birth, maximum within 6 weeks of age and preferably before hospital discharge. The second stage screening is done for infants who fail the first stage screening, that is um, at a minimum gap of a few hours of the first screening or maximum as soon as possible after discharge. Infants who fail both the two stages are referred for diagnostic tests. In case we don't have the facility for the tests at the first stage itself, we can do a behavioral screening in the first stage, which involves clinical tests like distraction test and whispered voice test. And the second stage screening can be done by physiological means, that is by tests OAE and AABR. In case screening is delayed, in case of very sick babies who are on ventilator etc, the procedure should be done as soon as possible as the infant is medically stable. Now to understand the two-stage screening protocol in an algorithmic format, we must first know that the result of a screening test can be pass or refer. Pass means the infant needs no further evaluation and refer means the infant should be subject to the next stage of assessment as per the protocol which is mentioned in the algorithm hereby. So, if after the first stage screening test, the result is passed in both the years and there is no risk factor, then in that case, the infant needs to be reviewed only if concerns arise. But if the result is passed in both the years and any risk factor is present, the infant needs to be monitored closely. If the result of the first stage screening is referred in any one of the year, the infant should be subject to the second stage of screening. And if the result is passed in both the years in the second stage, then the patient should again be managed as per this part of the algorithm. If the result in this stage is referred in any one of the years, the patient should be sent for diagnostic tests. One must also remember that even if the result is passed, the parents should be given complete information on hearing and language milestones since hearing loss can occur at any age. As far as the type of screening tests are concerned, physiological screening is to be preferred over behavioral screening. Physiological screening is screening by tests like OAE and AABR and behavioral screening is by clinical methods I'll discuss here. Ideally both AABR that is automated auditory brainstem response and OAE that is autoacoustic emissions should be done together since the combination has the maximum positive predictive value. We also know that every sensory pathway has a central component and a peripheral component. As shown in this diagram, the peripheral component of hearing is the middle and internal ear and the central component is the auditory brainstem pathway. But there are certain disadvantages to both the tests of physiological screening. Like OAE does not detect auditory neuropathy which form around 10% cases of congenital hearing loss. Also, OAE is more sensitive to background noise levels. Similarly, AABR is more costly and more time consuming. Now coming on to the diagnostic tests, these can be objective assessment of brainstem response via auditory brainstem response testing, auditory steady state response, tympanometry to assess the middle ear function, 
acoustic reflex to assess the middle ear function and brainstem auditory pathway integrity. Remember OAE and ABR together help in differential diagnosis of auditory neuropathy spectrum disorder and sensory neural hearing loss. Medical evaluation also needs to be done to determine the etiology of hearing loss. Then one must remember there are certain red flag signs in which case you don't need to perform the screening tests and must immediately refer, refer the patient for diagnostic tests. These are congenital cytomegalovirus infection, meningitis, congenital head neck abnormalities, significant head injury, syndromes associated with hearing loss and neonatal jaundice requiring exchange transfusion. The interventions should begin by the time the infant becomes 6 months of age and maximum within 1 year of age to preserve the normal development of the child. Options for interventions are the use of hearing technology like hearing aids or cochlear implants, the use of sign language or a combination of the above two. Parents should also be advised to enroll their child in a suitable early education program. Hence to summarize. The 136 rule is the guiding principle for approach to hearing assessment and management in newborns. All newborns should be screened universally. Screening is done in two stages, the first and second, and in resource constrained settings, the behavioral and the physiological aspects. The two tests are performed for screening, that is physiological screening. These are OAE and AABR. Infants not pass in both the stages should undergo diagnostic tests. But there are certain red flag signs whereby the infant should directly be referred for diagnostic tests without performing the screening tests. And interventions should be preferably begin before 6 months of age and maximum before 1 year of age. Thank you for a patient hearing and we know that sharing is caring. Thank you.